Hey there folks, I'm Rob Barnes, a Senior Developer Advocate here at HashiCorp. Today I want to talk to you about a Terraform module for Boundary which I built and I want to share this with you and explain why it might be useful for you. We'll start off with Boundary in dev mode. This is the natural route that most people will take is they'll start with Boundary dev just to get a feel for how the product works, how things operate within Boundary, just understand the domain model a bit more, right? So when you start in dev mode, it gives you a few different things, right? So it gives you um, an organization scope. It also gives you a project scope and you have things like an auth method with a login user and a login account. These things allow you to log into Boundary in dev mode. And then it gives you the actual meat of what Boundary is about, which is the actual targets, right? So you get a host catalog, uh, you also get a host and host sets, and you get a TCP target, which is just by default local host. So it will allow you to create an SSH connection to local host. Now that's pretty good just for getting to grips with um, how Boundary works and you know some of the, the finer details of Boundary itself. But once you graduate away from dev mode, you now get into the realms of, you know, having boundary running without some of these generated resources right so when you move into that realm where you're not using dev mode there are a few things you need to do before you can even log in right so if you take a look at the screen here you can see that there are no auth methods configured so there's no way to log in to configure boundary as per our organization requirements so we have a web page here which shows you how to configure boundary with your initial login user and account uh, as well as some uh, basic roles that you need. And if you just scroll through this page, you'll see that there are a number of steps that you, you need to uh, complete in order to log in. Um, so you need to create an organization. Uh, you'll then need to create a project uh, which is scoped to that organization. Then the next step is you'll need to create an auth method which is scoped to the organization. Once you've got the auth method, your next step is to create a login account. Um, again, this will be scoped to the auth method. Once you have the login account, then you need to create a user. Once you've created the user, the next step is to then associate that user with the login account. And that's just to get your login user. After that, then what you need to do is you need to go about creating some roles. Um, so you've got a few roles. You need uh, two roles to allow anonymous users to at least list the auth methods and the scopes at global level. Uh, and again, uh, they're gonna need to be able to do that at organizational level as well. This is so that when you get to the UI, for example, you can at least see what org uh, scope you wanna log into. If you don't have list permissions, you wouldn't be able to see that. And then we've just created a user as part of this workflow. So we need to give that user uh, the right grants to administer the organization and project scopes. So it's a number of steps and you know, most of the steps that you, you need to invoke are gonna require ID numbers, which are outputs from the previous steps. So it's very intertwined. Um, I actually went through this with a colleague and it took us around about 25 minutes to complete this part. Now, it's probably a one-time thing. You don't need to do this on a regular basis. You'll do it when you initially setting up Boundary. Um, so my first thought was, well, we'll just write a bash script for that. The issue with writing a bash script is, you know, when you run these commands, you get all of this output from boundary and then you need to maybe have it in JSON format and then you're going to need to filter through uh, using a tool like JQ, for example, to get the specific output that you need in order to feed it into the next command. Um, so all in all, it's, it's not the most pleasant experience using a bash script, which is why I created a Terraform module, which does all of this for you. Now, generally, Terraform modules I, I would reserve for things that are going to be uh, managed over a long period of time. And I understand that this is a, a one-off thing that you probably will do um, and then not have to go through it again. However, it's the easiest way to get up and running with configuring your boundary as per your organization's requirements. So, you know, the module is available today on the Terraform module registry. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below so that you can go and browse that. And it's quite simple, really. Um, in the most minimal terms, all you need to do 
is give it um, a username and a password that you want it to configure the uh, login account with and it will go ahead and perform all of those steps in a matter of seconds right however i made the module quite granular so you can specify details right and there aren't many details that you you need to specify in this use case so essentially you're just looking at the the uh, org name the project names and maybe some descriptions to go with that a name for the auth method um, same with the login user so you want the sorry the login account you want the name of the login account and the name of the login user uh, feeding in the password and most of these things have descriptions and then let's not forget the roles it also uh, creates all of those roles for you so that anonymous users can at least get to the point where they can see which scope they would like to log into um, and yeah it gives you pretty much everything you need so just in a few lines of code as you can see on the screen you just run a Terraform plan, which will show you all the resources that it's going to create. And then you can run the play. And when you run the play, just literally in a few seconds, you will be at the point where you can log in for the first time as your user. Now, just something I'll point out on this example code that you can see here on the screen is just like any other uh, Terraform provider we have out there, um, we have provider blocks for the boundary provider too. And this is where you just configure like connectivity. So where exactly is this boundary server that you're trying to uh, kind of configure? And also how can it authenticate with this? Now, because we haven't created the first user before we run this Terraform module, the only way to authenticate is by using the recovery key, which we put inside our config file when we started our boundary. So I can show you an example here of what a dummy config file looks like with the recovery stanza. We're essentially just taking that stanza, putting it into another file called recovery.hcl or whatever you want to name it. And we're pointing it at, at this Terraform provider block just so it can go ahead and access boundary in order to configure for first time use. So like I say, this is free and open source and readily available today. Uh, if you're using the module and you have any suggestions for it, please do feel free to reach out to us. Uh, I'm always happy to accept uh, requests and pull requests and any suggestions or anything like that. If you have any issues using the module, again, please raise an issue in the GitHub um, repository, which I'll leave all of the links in the description below. Um, and other than that, I'm happy to have saved you time in your uh, boundary journey, and I hope you enjoy using the module. I'm Rob Barnes, and it's been my pleasure to speak to you today.